Hiya folks, uh, Jimmy Dean Sausage here and this is a review on Chapter 3 Test for Statistics. Uh, and I'm not going to announce this to the class, so but this might get you a little more prepared for the test, the upcoming test, okay? Uh, it's not uh, an extensive review, but it's just something to give you a little boost on the test, I would think. Okay, so um, uh, here's some residual plots from uh, created from their uh, at least square regression lines, okay? So we've given some data and we plugged it in our calculator and we did um, uh, list three to be um, uh, list two minus uh, y sub one uh, quantity list one. Okay, so it's like f of x, but it's y sub one of list one. All right, and then so that would be in list three. Anyways, and so uh, then we do a, 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 a residual plot and here's some examples. So what, what would you say about this uh, uh, residual plot right here? So uh, about the linear model, okay? So is this a good representation of a linear model? Well, certainly it's not, you guys. A straight line uh, would be inappropriate model for this data right here. So it contradicts any linearity of, of the data. So so obviously um, uh, R doesn't look like it'd be close to 1 or negative 1 here. be more close to, um, I don't know, 50, 50% uh, or something. So um, it definitely wouldn't give you a nice straight line there. All right. So this one right here. Okay, here's number two. Um, what kind of, uh, would, would this uh, give us anything? And so this one, uh, the response variable y over here, here's my response variable right here. Um, it has a, more of a spread as x gets larger. It starts spreading out more. So, so uh, any kind of linear regression line, least square regression line would become less accurate as x got larger and larger. So as it starts flaring out right here. So I don't know, it might be okay in the beginning, but towards the end, uh, as x gets larger, um, uh, least square regression line would be uh, not very good. Okay, this one right here, you guys, um, it's pretty uniform, you guys. It's pretty much the same all the way through. And if it keeps going all the way through, um, a linear model would be a great representation of this. Uh, so your least square regression line would be great on this one. So it fits the data well. So a line would be a good model on this. Okay, typically, a good residual plot tells us uh, that we can make some sense with our model. So if they give you a, a residual plot, okay, um, and so there's nothing strange happening, there's no bends or there's no outliers happening, or it's not, you know, flaring out at the ends. So it should stretch horizontally about the same amount of, uh, of scatters throughout the plot, above and below, it should balance out. And typically, you guys, uh, residual plots are really boring. They don't tell you much. So when you see a residual plot, we, we want this kind of desire to do a, a nice linear model on that. Alrighty? Okay, so um, here's just some other tidbits of information, you guys. Uh, a numerical sum summary of any data. You have list one, you have list two. So I do a you know a two variable stat or a one variable stat, and and get this information right here. Okay, this would be a two variable stat, obviously. You'd find out your the mean of the x's, the mean of the y's, standard deviation of the x's, standard deviation of the y's, and your correlation. That's a good representation right here. Don't forget. Um, uh, your linear regression line always passes through the, the average of your x's comma the average of your y's and it has slope r times standard deviation of y over standard deviation of x. y is always on top. It's like slope formula. y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. But here we got to multiply it by the correlation. The correlation uh, determines the strength of this right here. Alright, so that's enough information to write an equation of a line. y equals mx plus b. Okay, here's the ordered pair right here, uh, and then here's the slope. You get the slope right here and plug everything in. Alrighty, so uh, R squared uh, represents the variation of X on Y. So if you ever see the word variation, that's talking about R squared. Okay, both variables must be quantitative when you're calculating your correlation. So I, I couldn't have uh, like a, uh, the position on a football player versus his uh, height, say, or something because the position is not a quantitative it's a categorical one they both got to be quantitative to be calculating your correlations okay so um, also correlation doesn't have any units so you know you can't have a correlation of uh, uh, 0.71 miles per hour that's in units it can't be in units it's just a number that we want close to one or negative one okay residuals are obtained from your actual y minus your predicted y Okay, and you get your predicted y from your least square regression line that you plug in your calculator right here. Okay, and you get your actual y from the data from the table that they gave you. 
So whatever your y is, you subtract off your predicted y, and uh, that would be called your residual. Okay, and then you can graph those residual plots. And so look on uh, lesson three five on residuals on how to how to plot residuals if you struggle on that. Okay, and you get your y hat from your least square regression line in your graphing calculator. Okay, and it's uh, under stats, and then scroll over to calculate, and I think it's number four linear regression. Okay, and if you did it in list one, then you do list one, comma, list two, and you probably do comma y sub one. And y sub one is in vars, and then scroll over to y vars, and then it's under function, so you go enter, enter, and your y sub one will appear. Okay, uh, the new TI calculators, um, uh, you do, um, if you can see this, you do list one here, you do list two here, and I forgot what this line is right here, something equation, it says something equation, store equation or something, and that's where you put your y sub one in. Alrighty, Casio, sorry. Um, I know it's easier on Casios, but I don't work on Casios in my stats class, only in my st uh, uh, calculus class. Alright, uh, correlation is not a resistant measure of association. Uh, outliers can influence your, li uh, your correlation big time, uh, so it would be able to influence your least square regression lie also in a big way. So an example, this would be great on an AP test, you guys. You always want to put an example. An example here, like uh, Bill Gates moving into the neighborhood, and when you're describing the amount of education, how much education versus how much wealth, okay? Um, and you can create a least square regression line. If Bill Gates moved into the neighborhood, he's a total outlier. Um, and that would change everything drastically, It'd change your correlation and your least square regression line. So, uh, and that's it, you guys, all right? So uh, that should get you a little bit more prepared for your test. Uh, looks like probably tomorrow, whenever tomorrow is for you. Take care, you guys.